As a premier community in Hampton Roads, James City County strives to maintain a high quality of life for all citizens through sound fiscal management and legislative actions. In an ongoing effort to increase transparency, your Board of Supervisors holds public meetings to garner citizen input before making important decisions. Here's tonight's meeting agenda. Stay tuned, the Board of Supervisors meeting will begin shortly. We call this meeting of the James City County Board of Supervisors to order for a regular meeting. Mr. Stevens, just call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Eisenhower? Here. Mr. Eisenhower represents the Jamestown District. Mr. Hipple? Here. Mr. Hipple represents the Palatin District. Ms. Sadler? Here. Ms. Sadler represents the Stonehouse District and is vice chair of the board. Mr. McGlennon? Here. Mr. McGlennon represents the Roberts District and is chair of the board. Sitting to my far left is Adam Kinsman, county attorney, and I'm Scott Stevens, county administrator, and it's my pleasure to be clerk to the board. We'll need a motion to allow Ms. Larson to participate electronically uh, due to a family matter uh, that prevents her from attending in person. Motion. We have a motion to approve. Mr. Stevens, please call the roll. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. McGlennan? Aye. Motion carries. Ms. Sadler, welcome. Ms. Sadler, Ms. You're Ms. used Larson. to saying my name. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Larson, welcome to the meeting. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we start our meetings with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, today we're really fortunate to have a very special guest with us, uh, Ms. Amelia Purse, and uh, she is a resident of the Jamestown District, so I'll turn things over to uh, Mr. Eisenhower to introduce Amelia. Okay, Amelia Purse is age seven, turning eight on July 31st, uh, and she is a, uh, uh, attends uh, Matthew Whaley Elementary School as a rising third grader. Uh, she lives in the Meadows with her uh, uh, parents, uh, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay and Jason Purse, and uh, sibling is Calvin, age three, back, with, back in the back of the room. Uh, and she loves reading, particularly Babysitter's Club, Rainbow Magic, uh, the Jewel Fairies, and Unicorn Academy books. She enjoys swimming with the Williamsburg Manta Rays and Coast Guard Blue Dolphins. And uh, she's uh, in, regular in the Rec Connect program, the summer reading program, and day camp with the uh, 4-H uh, and after a moment of silence, if you will, please, Amelia, you can lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you want to hang on there for just a minute, I will come out and we will give you. Can we maybe I'm have sure. the board come out and, come on. and uh, join out here? I'm sure, I'm sure we want to. Want, Dad wants to get a picture. <laughs> well, we yeah. that needs to be in the picture. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm the. I'm usually the photographer. It's okay. <laughs> just go on up and stand right up front there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job. Very special moment. Thank you. 
Uh, we have uh, now an opportunity for public comment. Do we have any cards? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Just this one. Uh, and uh, I would, oh, uh, I would ask Ms. Peg Borman to step forward for public comment. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Stevens, Mr. Kinsman, Mr. Purse, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm Peg Borman. I reside at 17 Settlers Lane in downtown Lightfoot, uh, and I'm chairman of the Clean County Commission, and I'm here to talk trash, as usual. Uh, and trash is a good portion of our lives, whether we like it or not. But it doesn't have to be the major component, although some people think that it does take my priority, but um, I do have a, a life other than trash. But anyway, but how do you feel like about trash? And how do you feel like roadside litter? Does it make you feel good to see it out there? Does it make you feel your heart hurt a little bit because it's trashing up our beautiful county. Uh, it angers me. Uh, I don't expect somebody else to pick it up, but sometimes I have to. Um, do you pick it up or, um, when it's possible? Maybe uh, we, we expect volunteers to pick it up or we expect uh, the county to pay to have it picked up. But that's not what it should be. We should all take responsibility for it because <clears throat> unlike a lot of people that don't care, and um, well, some people care, but they just say, oh, well, let somebody else do it. But uh, I want to, um, and I hate it when somebody plays the blame game. Um, if I've done something, then I, I like to own up to it. And most people that throws out trash doesn't own up to it. And they, they don't realize that because we're not, we're not persecuting or prosecuting, I don't whatever it is, <laughs> uh, for the, the cigarette that goes out the, wind sh out the door, I mean out the window. And uh, <clears throat> we don't have um, judges just don't, take on some of these cases, or so people are lackadaisical about even complaining about it. So we gotta, we got to be adults, and we need to be accountable for our actions. And um, uh, I wish that more people would get involved. And the co commission just hosted a volunteer appreciation uh, picnic honoring Will Barnes a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we had about 60 people that showed up that have been out volunteering to take care of these problems that we've got uh, throughout the year. Um, but I want to talk a little bit now about the annual expo. It's Litter and Recycling Expo is uh, in November. And the day, recycle, American Recycle Day is November 15th. And we're going to hold that again at War Hill, and we're also going to have the repair and fix it event. So um, put, it'll be on the Saturday around the 15th, and I don't know what the date is right now. But anyway, just made a no make a note of it and plan on coming out and, and being with us that day. Um, but meanwhile, we've got two new commissioners, which I'm happy to, to say that... Um, one of them is from Jamestown. But I'm sorry, Mr. Hipple, but we still don't have anybody from Powhatan. And I've been working hard to grind, and I know you have too. Yes. But um, so I'm not going to give you any bad remarks on that. Uh, but I hope that we will get somebody else that will come in from Powhatan. And um, I'm working on one from uh, Roberts right now. So. If with everybody's help, we can get more commissioners. And, um, and don't, meanwhile, don't be afraid to go and pick up that litter when you can. And um, you can volunteer as a, a commissioner on our Clean County Commission or one of the other many opportunities that the commission offers. 
and you can call 757-259-9375. And the young lady that answers the phone there, Regina, she'll be glad to hook you up with some kind of a volunteer position or give you some kind of idea of what you can help us with. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Borman, for everything you do for us. And uh, I know you'll have your uh, toes and fingers crossed and offer up a little prayer for no rain in November. Uh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, that's uh, uh, our public comment. Uh, we'll now move on to a matter that uh, we're moving on the agenda um, uh, with the board's uh, uh, acquiescence to uh, uh, prove a proclamation uh, to declare the week of July 17th to 23rd, pre-trial probation and parole su supervisor, su supervision week in James City County. Uh, we have a proclamation, uh, whereas community corrections are an essential part of the justice system and whereas community correction professionals uphold the law with, uh, uh, with dignity while recognizing uh, the right of the public to be safe, uh, safeguarded from criminal activity and whereas community corrections professionals are uh, trained professionals who provide services and referrals for offenders, uh, and whereas community corrections professionals work in uh, partnership with community agencies and groups to pr promote uh, prevention, uh, intervention, and advocacy, and whereas community corrections pro professionals provide services, support, and protection for, and whereas community corrections uh, professionals advocate for community and restorative justice, and whereas community corrections professionals uh, are, true fo are true force for positive change uh, in their communities, now therefore be it resolved that as chairman of the Board of Supervisors, uh, I hear, do hereby proclaim July 17th, 23rd, 2022 as pretrial probation and parole supervision week in James City County and encourage the community to recognize and honor the men and women of Colonial Community Corrections for their uh, tireless work uh, in, provide, in improving the lives of our citizens and keeping our community safe. Uh, and then we fix that uh, proclamation. So. Uh, with that, I'll uh, ask that uh, we call the roll for the adoption of the proclamation. Chairman, I think there's for recognition for the board to be aware of it and to okay. ask uh, the Hal and the representatives here to come forward and accept the proclamation. Great. All right. I really just want to, first of all, thank you guys for that. And I want to recognize my staff. They do tireless work. Um, they see people every day that uh, they have to try to help through bad situations that they are in life. Uh, they take this stuff home with them, unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, it's a very difficult job. Community Corrections, come on up, Amy. Assistant Director Amy. Uh, and... I, they need to be recognized. It's it's an under the radar type position, and they really do help keep the community safe uh, and help people turn the corner when they're going through difficult times in life. So, I want to thank the staff publicly for that. So, thank you. One more person in the picture. Yeah. I'm sure Mr. Digsel can uh, convey our uh, appreciation to all the other members of his staff as well. Okay. 
We uh, have no consent calendar uh, this evening, so we'll move on to public hearings. And uh, I want to recognize that uh, Barbara Null is here tonight representing the Planning Commission. Thank you for, for coming tonight to represent uh, the, uh, your fellow members of the PC. Uh, our first uh, SUP is SUP uh, 22004. Uh, 4451 Long Hill Road Life Church uh, Daycare SUP Amendment. Terry Costello. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Ms. Carla Javier of Child Development Resources, also known as CDR, has applied to amend a previously approved special use permit for a daycare located at 4451 Long Hill Road. This is the current location of Life Church. The property is zoned R8, rural residential, and designated low-density residential, and is located inside the primary service area. Surrounding development include Windsor Forest, Seasons Trace, and Lafayette High School. The Christian Life Center, known as Life Church, has occupied this facility since March 2000. In March 2020, a special use permit was approved for the church to bring it into conformance with the zoning ordinance and for a daycare for up to 30 children. Due to COVID and other issues, the program never began. In lieu of the church operating a daycare program, the Head Start program operated by CDR will be moving into this location. Currently, this program is operating at Lafayette High School, which is located at 4460 Long Hill Road. CDR is proposing to have a maximum of 32 children with the operating hours of 7 to 5 p.m. This SUP before you tonight will amend the previous one approved in 2020. The changes are increasing the maximum number of children from 30 to 32, expanding the hours to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., where previously the hours were 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., and adding a condition that mitigates noise since there's an outdoor play area proposed with this application. Staff finds this proposal to be compatible with surrounding development and consistent with the 2045 Comprehensive Plan and Zoning Ordinance and recommends that the Board of Supervisors approve this application subject to the proposed conditions. At its June 1st, 2022 regular meeting, the Planning Commission voted 7-0 to to recommend approval of, of the SGP subject to the proposed conditions. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time, and the applicant is also available. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Costello. Uh, before we do that, let's uh, ask for a report on the Planning Commission's uh, actions on this. It's Jack. <laughs> Ms. Nell's not here tonight. <laughs> it's not Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Noll had a conflict, and so we did a last-minute switch, but uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Haldeman. Uh, I don't have much to add to Ms. Costello's remarks. Um, the Planning Commission met on June 1st to consider this application, which was very similar to one we approved in March of 2020. Um, there was no discussion. There was no public comment. Uh, there were no questions. And the Commission unanimously recommends approval. Thank you very much. Anybody have questions for staff? Ms. Larson? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Let me go ahead and open the public hearing and ask if there are any speaker cards. No one to speak on this matter, so I'll close the public hearing and ask for the board's direction. Motion to approve. Motion to approve the SUP. Uh, Mr. Stevens, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Our second uh, public hearing is for SUP 220003. Uh, 7683 Richmond Road, Kettle Corn Food Processing and Storage. Uh, Ms. Costello again. <laughs> Thank back. you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Mr. David Tufty, property and business owner, has applied for a special use permit on behalf of Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn to change the existing contractor's office and warehouse use at 7683 Richmond Road to allow the use of the property for food processing and storage. The property is zoned A1 General Agriculture, des designated low density residential and located inside the primary service area. This property consists of approximately 1.95 acres with 5,360 square feet of building space. Inside the building is divided by use of the following categories. Administrative purpose, storage of inventory, 
repair and restoration of kennels, and finally to process, package, and distribute kettle corn and pork rinds. Previously, the warehouse space was used to cold contractor trucks and equipment. Staff has provided conditions to reduce impacts to the adjacent residential properties. These conditions include limitation on hours of operation, prohibiting outdoor storage, screening all dumpster and HVAC units, and limiting the preparation, heating, or processing of kettle corn and pork rinds to a fully enclosed building utilizing an activated carbon filtration system. At its June 1st meeting, the Planning Commission voted 7-0 to zero to recommend approval of the SGP request to the Board of Supervisors subject to the proposed conditions. Staff finds this proposal to be compatible with surrounding development and consistent with the James City County 2045 Comprehensive Plan and Zoning Ordinance and recommends that the Board of Supervisors approve this application subject to the proposed conditions. Thank you for your time this evening and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. In addition, the applicant is also available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Costello. Uh, Mr. Haldeman, anything to add from the Planning Commission? Well, again, um, no residents spoke during the uh, public comment period on this application. Uh, there were several questions uh, from the commissioners, uh, and it was determined that, <clears throat> excuse me, there would be no change in the footprint of the building. Uh, there was no response to the county's outreach to neighbors, no negative response or any response at all. The building uh, would be insulated to mute noise from the operation. Uh, activated carbon filters would be used to mute uh, the minor odor from the operation. And one commissioner mentioned that he was pleased to support a successful local business that's expanding. It's really about the nut, nut of it. And uh, we did unanimously uh, recommend approval. Very agreeable group. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody have questions for <laughs> staff before we open public hearing? Hearing none. Open the public hearing. We have one card. Uh, David uh, Tuff, Tufty, uh, the applicant. Sorry. Tufty, welcome. I'm David Tufty. I own Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn. And Would you I mind just, 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 uh, just indicating your address for the uh, for the record? I'm sorry. Would you mind just uh, indicating your address for the record? 7683 Richmond Road, Williamsburg, Virginia. And I just thought I'd see if anybody had any questions about what we're proposing to do. I think normally we would just ask if you have anything you'd like to, to add, and then if, if uh, people do have questions, we would. I'd be happy to entertain them. All right. Well, what I would add simply is that we've been blessed. Okay. Um, this is only to do supplemental kettle corn orders. Everything we make is at the premium outlets currently. Every once in a while, we get a big order, like from the hospitals in Richmond. They'll order 3,000 at a time as a employee appreciation day. And when they do that, to make it at the premium outlets, and we service 200 7-Eleven stores and keep up inventory and service our customers, makes it kind of difficult. So we do not intend to sell anything at the Richmond location where we you know, are proposing to do this. Um, it's simply to do the overload of orders that we get, which is only maybe once a month. Um, and that's the whole reason for this. And it, it was... A perfect space to do this. I've got a, um, <clears throat> something I want to add as well. I, I know Dave has been in the community a long time, running several businesses, and has been very successful. And this, I think, will be a great component for what we're looking for in James City County to promote that. Um, the only thing, when you let me go ahead and close the public hearing. Okay, then. go ahead. Just close the public hearing. Thank you. And the only. Um, you know, when you ride down Rochambeau, you get to smell Pierce's barbecue cooking, and it's really, to me, a, a, a unique smell. It's a good and smell. And I was hoping that we'd be able to smell the popcorn yeah, we as we want to smell that popcorn. Road, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you won't smell it as much. <laughs> so when I heard that, I was like, oh, oh come on, I want I to know. smell the popcorn. I know. But, um, 
I'll support this when you're ready for it. Thank you very much. I'd just like to add that we're ha I'm happy to support it as well. You're a blessing to the community. You've been an outstanding uh, business owner, and um, I can say that your popcorn probably ranks right up there with my grandson, so we keep it uh, our pantry well stocked with, with what you offer. So thank you very much for all that you contribute. Uh, anybody else have any comments or questions before we move on? Uh, Ms. Larson? I'm good. I, I love Uncle Dave's kettle corn as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, with that, uh, look for a motion. Look for motion. a motion for approval. Everybody, everybody's jumping in to uh, mm -hmm. see if they can get a free bag of popcorn out of it. Can't do that. Can't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Stevens, would you call the roll, please? Sir, Ms. Sadler? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. The motion carries. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item number th uh, three uh, in our public hearings, the resolution for Powhatan Terrace Development. And Ms. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Housing Partnership, Inc., HBI, is planning to construct a low-income housing development at 1676 and 1678 Jamestown Road in James City County with 36 units to be known as Powhatan Terrace. As part of the application to receive tax credits, HPI has proposed to accept five project-based vouchers to reduce the cost burden on qualified households. The designated public housing agency responsible for the operation of Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program within James City County, the James City County Housing, the Office of Housing, does not currently have the ability to provide project-based vouchers. As such, HPI desires to obtain housing vouchers from the Hampton Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the use in, Powhatan, in the Powhatan Terrace development. Section 3623 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended, requires that the Board of Supervisors of James City County hold a public hearing and adopt a resolution declaring the need for the authority to exercise its powers in James City County. Every effort will be made to encourage the authority and housing partnerships to give priority use of the housing vouchers to James City County residents and or to those who work in James City County. In talking with the developer, these project-based vouchers are required to retain the low-income housing tax credits for this project. Staff's recommendation is that the Board of Supervisors adopt the attached resolution to authorize acceptance of these vouchers. Be happy to entertain questions, and I'd also like to point out that the chairman of the um, Housing Partnerships Board is here. Anybody have any questions for staff? I had two, I had two quick questions, if I might, uh, Ms. Watson. First is simply, um, uh, will we uh, in the future be able to um, receive such um, uh, vouchers uh, as, as a county agency? talking about um, project-based vouchers. Mm -hmm. There is the, the possibility. We currently have 154 vouchers. Of those, 142 are leased up, and then we have 11 people who have just been um, issued vouchers and are looking for apartments um, or looking for housing. We are proposing that we ask HUD for some additional um, vouchers and that would allow us then to um, identify um, project-based vouchers so that we could have our own. So yes, that is um, planned for the future. And I'll just to, to alert the board to the fact that uh, um, I noticed that uh, in, in the staff memo and um, in the um, resolution, although in, in your presentation you did make this clear, that uh, there was no m number specified, and so uh, I'm going to propose an amendment uh, to this uh, to indicate no more than five vouchers uh, um, would be uh, uh, accepted under this program. 
So with that, questions. Uh, <coughs> uh, Ms. Watson, the um, there is there any way we can guarantee that it'll be for the citizens of James City County? I'm sure we probably can't. There's probably some law that says it's discrimination of other communities or something. Um, can you explain that? Is there a way we can make it just for James City County? In the application for low M income tax credits, um, HUD encourages that um, residents on the local PHA, which be which would be those with uh, James City County Hot Housing Office, have priority for the um, for the vouchers. Okay, the um, I know when Mr. Henderson was doing the candle um, factory shops and houses, and that's why he was trying to find people to fit into. But he said he had talked to me several times, and he couldn't find that to fit into the community. Is there is there a difference? Am I not understanding something? Because he was having a hard time finding somebody that would fit in the, even though all the, the houses look the same, these were more affordable than some of the others, like we do most of our communities. We have X amount of affordable housing. Is there a difference in what we're talking about here from what he was trying to do and what we're trying to do? The apartments have a range in the amount of rent, so not everybody who, say, has a two-bedroom will necessarily be paying um, the same amount. So I think it's it's staggered rent. And my colleague, Mr. Denny, um, am I explaining this correctly, or yes. is there additional information I should ask or answer? Or do you have additional information that you would want to share? Was, was the Candle Factory uh, a tax credit uh, development? I didn't think it was, but... Initially, I think they I thought, were asking for. Under the, under they were asking for policy. tax credits. Right. Uh, they were asking for. Tax they were credits. asking for tax okay. credits at the time, <clears throat> and so the the tax credits again allow for apartments to be um, have a range in the amount that we that you would pay that people would pay based on based on income. Okay, and and we have a hundred and what sixty some. We have a hundred. I'm sorry. Which in Are James you, City County? You're talking about vouchers? Vouchers. We have 154. 154 vouchers in James City County. So we have a limit of the amount of vouchers we're allowed, or how does that happen? HUD, HUD allocates um, a particular number of vouchers to each jurisdiction. We happen to have 154. We're, we're, we're fairly on the small, smaller size, based just based on the size of James City County. Larger communities have much um, larger numbers of vouchers available to them. Like Virginia Beach has like 10,000. I mean, it's a lot. So you can see the, the change. Um, but we do have the ability, the housing, the housing office does have the ability to ask HUD for to be awarded additional vouchers that we would have to um, offer to James City County residents and lease them up. And how are we seeing the amounts working out? Are, are we about even with the amount needed or... I know that's going to be. Um, I'll answer by saying that we currently have 369 people on the waiting list on our on our housing choice voucher waiting list. So that gives you an indication. We have the the 153, the 154, and of those, you know, we have 142 leased up, and then 11 people looking. So um, there's always a demand for for um, housing and, and yes. Okay. So just to be, I'm sorry, you don't. Go ahead. Yes. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So we have a list of people, but we can't a hundred, it's, it would be, it'd be preferable if we could offer them to James City County residents, the vouchers, but it, there's no guarantee. Is that, is that in, in the, um, in the information that I have, um, in order to um, to qualify, see if I can find it, for the low-income tax credit, um, people that are on the um, Housing Choice Voucher waiting list in the locality in which they're going to be located have priority for those vouchers. Okay. And, Barb, in talking through that, Ms. Sadler, you know, I think for us, there's um, 
a high guarantee that our residents will have an opportunity for the other units. There are 36 units. For the 31 units, I think there's a high probability our residents, particularly those on our list, on our housing list, uh, would have an opportunity. As I understand the project base vouchers, it is most likely to come Excellent. from the locality working with us to help prioritize, but there's no guarantee of prioritizing our residents. And so that is That's a the part I'm confused about. Yes, yeah. ma'am. And again, it is a, a pretty complex and rather confusing topic, and we've had a lot of conversation around it, but that's my understanding, that because of the tax credits, the units themselves, the 31 of the 36, our residents would get some prioritization of access to those units. But the vouchers. The voucher side we may have access to, but I don't believe it would be a priority access. It is likely, I think, that it's somebody that maybe, say, lives in that community works here that likely would take that voucher. I think somebody living in another community wouldn't want to move away from where they are working. I think so it's likely you're having somebody working here, but it's not guaranteed. Mr. Chairman, if I can help with uh, Mr. Hipple's question on uh, Villages at Candle Station and, and some of the other ones that have been proffered, um, those were done pursuant to a proffer, and that is where um, someone had to go in and actually purchase the unit. And so very different demographic, someone that wanted to, to, to outright purchase and own and fee a unit, um, these vouchers can be used for rental um, amounts. So very different, and, and I will echo that. I think we've had some hard time finding people that want to do a lot of purchasing of the unit. So a lot of those proffers say that um, they have to offer them to James City County residents first. They go through um, our, our housing department, uh, and those are the ones we hold soft seconds on, a number of different things, but a uh, very different unit type between rental and purchase. Okay. Now, will all these, will these always remain rentals? Yes, in the, in the um, Powhatan Terrace, they will always remain rentals, yes. And no one could come in and buy them and sub-rent it. It always has to be rented. I'm just checking to make sure, because a lot of times we have, you know, a house that fits a certain number that would allow a citizen to move in, but somebody may come in and buy it before the person actually really needs it and rent it. So I know these are rental units. I just want to make sure that that doesn't slip through the the crack. I'd like to answer that question. You want to come up for it? This is Hi, Tony. Name is Tony. Tony Peroso. I'm um, 147 Lakewood Drive, if that's what you need to know. Um, I'm chairman of the board of um, Board of Directors of Housing Partnerships. Our executive director, Brandy Wheeler, cannot be here tonight. She's on vacation. So, um, Powhatan Terrace is going to be a rental project. Uh, individual, individual units will not be offered for sale. Um, it will be uh, have professional management and will be operated as a rental complex, all 36 units. Um, can you explain if, um, if I go off track here? So, my understanding of the process is for these vouchers specifically right. that we're talking about that um, to get these low-income housing tax credits, which are critical to funding this project, I mean, if we don't get these credits, the project can't go forward. Um, HUD uses a scoring system. These vouchers are a critical component of that scoring system. Uh, my understanding also is that currently, James City County does not offer project-based vouchers. Their vouchers are actually tied to the tenant. So it's the tenant that gets the voucher, not the project. Um, so we'd either have to change the county's management plan, which would be a more lengthy process, or there is a process in place that allows for these vouchers to be transferred between localities. And at the staff level, we have arranged with the city of Hampton to transfer these vouchers, um, five, which will give us, we think, um, the scoring we need to get the tax credits moving forward. So that's, that's kind of the nutshell of process as I understand it. Did I get that about right? Um, so I'll entertain any other questions you might have. Yeah, my, uh, my only other question is, uh, if I remember correctly, when we were talking about these tax credits, is that uh, it is a commitment, legal commitment for a period of 30 to 35 years, I believe, um, that this has to remain this way. Um, in other words, it's not something that I mean, it's not in perpetuity necessarily, but it, it's a nice long time period that, that it uh, stays, stays affordable under these, these tax credits. Is that uh, a fair assessment? Uh, Mr. Denny was, was telling me he thinks it's a 20-year commitment for the project. Okay. I thought but it, it was is a long term, not forever, but a long term. Okay. 
So, you know, um, housing partnerships as uh, it plans to operate this, this complex, um, it aligns with our mission um, to support housing in James City County. Um, and um, we fully expect that this will generate revenue for our organization that we will then roll back into the community in accordance with our primary mission, which is repair of, uh, of housing um, for those who need it. Quick question, if I may. You said these vouchers are coming from Hampton. Um, so is the city of Hampton expecting us to house Hampton's citizens because these vouchers are coming from Hampton? I'm just curious what everyone's expectations That's are. That's not my understanding. I'm just trying to figure out how all this works. It's complicated. <laughs> uh, manager of the housing office. Uh, yeah, the, the way that it works, uh, they generally, and I've talked to all of the managers from the different agencies, Chesapeake, Suffolk, Portsmouth, Newport News, and Hampton, they all have to operate from whatever their admin plan says. Just like our admin plan comes to the Board of Supervisors for approval, we have to adhere to that. Their admin plans stipulate that they will issue all of their, um, they will, issue all of their vouchers to individuals coming from their waiting list first. What they have told me is, like Scott said, if they already live in James City County or they don't want to move to James City County, once they exhaust that, then they will go to the leasing agent, which in this case will be Bay Aging, and they will ask them to make referrals from their waiting list. And as Ms. Watson said, all and, and Scott as well, all of the remaining units, the 31, preference will go to uh, the local housing agency. And we have 369 people on our waiting list, so we would send them a letter and ask them all to go apply, and they would get to go, they would get priority for those units. Yeah, I'm concerned about the, the vouchers. That's, if they're coming from Hampton, if we're getting five from Hampton, I'm just curious if Hampton is expect, expecting Hampton residents be able to come and utilize them. That's, Only speaking. Yes, okay. they would be expecting that. So Hampton residents would be first on the list on their waiting list and see if there's any in there we could with only five vouchers have five people from Hampton not that I'm against anybody from Hampton moving up here anybody <laughs> can move up here anytime they want but I thought and, and I know when we talked about this project several years back we changed some zoning and changed some stuff and made sure we can get everything packed into this and this should be what we need and we shouldn't need anything else, and and now we're needing vouchers to come forward for the project as well to make it successful, and I want it to be a successful project, but I want to be a successful project for the citizens of James City County, and that's a crutch that's kind of bothered me that, okay, Hampton gets first say on their citizens. Well, we're building it here for James City County. And y'all, I know we want to promote housing for everywhere, but I got to take care of my backyard first and then go out from there. So, you know, and, and I want to see our citizens, you know, be able to utilize the vouchers, but it sounded like Hampton's first and we're second. And with five, it doesn't sound like it would be very hard to get, you know, five people to move from Hampton up here, and I wouldn't blame them because of this, we've got a beautiful community here. And I, I wouldn't blame them one bit, so I'm not, you know, against anybody from Hampton moving up here. I just want something for our, those five would to be applied to our citizens. Does that make sense? Uh, it, it does, and I understand exactly I a, what you're uh, saying. Um, the, the greatest value opportunity here for us is those 31 units. Right. They are all below fair market rent. Some of them are even less than half of fair market rent. And our waiting list citizens who are all in the 50% of the uh, area mean and income range have first shot at those units. We can tell them, here's an application, go apply, you get moved to the top, you get preference because VHDA requires it as part of the tax credit application. So we have those 369 folks, and they should have first shot at those low rent units, income-based rent units. So if we don't have the five, we could lose the entire project. Right. And so we lose 31 possibilities right. for James City County because of five. Right. Okay. So 
Ms. Larson, I, I know you had a uh, question or a comment. Yes, I had a quick question. I had a uh, question for the chair um, of housing partnerships. Um, I'm, I appreciate you being here this evening. And so I just want to reiterate what was just said. It's, if I heard you correctly, without the uh, without us doing this this evening, this project will not go forward if, if there is a no vote this evening? Uh, yes, ma'am, that's our understanding. As you all know, um, construction costs have ridden considerably. Um, you know, funding for this project is currently at risk. We think we can make it happen. Um, but without the tax credits, um, we are pretty confident that we cannot make it happen. And so, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Denny said, you know, we're looking at potentially, you know, 31 units prior to James City County, maybe five that would be prior to Hampton. But without this resolution being approved and us getting those tax credits, then there's, there's no, none. So I think that's the decision that the board has to make. And in hearing your address this evening, you will be a, a nearby neighbor. So I, and as a member of that board, I'm sure that it is um, of utmost importance to you that this um, that this neighborhood be a good neighbor to the neighborhoods that are around it and already established. I, I would think this would be a priority of the board. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, yes, uh, my my neighborhood is directly across the street from where this is going. So, okay. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. And then just a quick question for staff. Um, so how, what if somebody, do we have anybody from James City County that would have this type of voucher that say they have a job in Hampton? Or can, is there anything preventing them from going down and taking a voucher, not in this particular, I'm not talking about this particular project, I'm talking about a voucher. Um, can they take this same type of voucher that we're discussing, one of these five, and go live in another community? Um, with project-based vouchers, they are um, attached to the unit. And so unlike the vouchers that James City County currently administers, the voucher in the name, Housing Choice Voucher, you can take the voucher and you can move to any locality. With a housing choice, with a, with, excuse me, with a project-based voucher, it is, a tie, it is tied to the unit. So you're not, you don't have the ability to take that project-based voucher and then go to another jurisdiction right but i'm do we have any of the type of vouchers that can go with the tenant to all, another all, all of the vouchers that james city county has are um are portable so they can go anywhere so there's a good chance that a voucher that we've issued is in another locality if if they choose to move they can do that yes just okay. as uh, you know, people can also move in from other jurisdictions Perfect. that already have a housing choice voucher. Which so that may be already happening now. In that our is community. that is already happening now. Okay. All right. Thank you. So it's housing choice voucher and project based voucher. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm just trying to get it all yeah. The head. the project is is attached to the unit and the project and then the housing choice voucher. You have the choice to use that voucher anywhere right. that okay. you would like. Thanks, that helps, thank you. So, so if I can just ask a couple of things. First, first of all, Mr. Parr, thank you very much for your service on, on this nonprofit board. I know that uh, serving in a leadership position like that is, is very challenging and uh, when you're undertaking development, uh, something that your organization is not really um, had much experience with, um, it becomes uh, additionally challenging. Um, I, I guess I, I uh, would just look for some um, uh, reassurance from your perspective. Obviously, you can't provide an, an ironclad guarantee, but this project has been through a lot of iterations over uh, over the years, and uh, um, do you feel like you're getting ready to actually move forward with we're, the project? We're getting close. We're getting yeah. close. Um, we, um, you know, the last two hurdles are securing funding, which this decision tonight that you're going to make is going to be critical to getting us there, but we think that's over there. And then the last piece also that the county um, um, can help us with is our site final site plan approval, which is in county, um, been back and forth a couple times getting final site approval. And once we have that and we secure funding, we think we're ready to put the first shovel in the ground pretty soon. So. 
And and I just want to reiterate that just the, the idea that uh, while um, we don't have a, an ironclad guarantee that uh, James City County residents would rise up in Hampton or Newport News, uh, um, uh, which might have these these vouchers. Uh, this one, I guess, is Newport News. Is that right? Uh, or, or right. This, this, these are, Hampton. this is Hampton. Hampton. This is Hampton. Um, we do have a lot of residents of Hampton and Newport News who commute to jobs in James City County. And uh, uh, one um, benefit of uh, having a small number of these vouchers available uh, to those residents is that we might be able to take some traffic off the road uh, and uh, uh, make uh, quality of life a little bit better for folks who are already contributing to the community. So um, uh, I, I certainly um, think that makes good sense. I, I will still want to uh, make an amendment at the appropriate time, but uh, with that, uh, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and... John, could, I, could you make your amendment and then... Can I move the motion? Sure, sure. I'm gonna. I just opened the public hearing. I don't think we have any cards, so I'm close the public hearing. And now I'll make my my amendment, uh, asking that we simply add a sentence to uh, the resolution, uh, indicating that uh, um, no more than five uh, uh, such vouchers shall be uh, available in this project. Uh, and I uh, ask uh, for a vote on that motion. Any any discussion? None. Mr. Stevens, call the roll, please. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Ms. Larson? For Sterling Nichols, aye. Ms. Hedler? This is just, just the amendment. The amendment, aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Okay, the amendment passes. And so now oh, do I have a motion to adopt uh, the uh, resolution uh, as amended? Ruth Warren. Um, so did you ask for a motion? I'm yes. sorry. Yes, okay. I, did. I move the motion. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. The um, and I would hate to lose the 31 because of five. I would like to have 36. The five vouchers be all James City County, and that's the county I support. And and I know that you know we don't have any, so we have to reach out and and do this so I don't want the, the project to fall apart and lose 31 possible potential um, rentals and home sites for people because of five but if there's any way in the future we can do it all in James City County so that it's all here and we make sure that you know our county gets first pick and like I said I have nothing against anyone moving into James City County coming people that are working here from Hampton, Newper News, or anything else. I just always support James City County and, and want to see everything we can in James City County. So that's the only comment I have on that. I hate to lose 31 because of five. Thank you. Yeah, I just I just did want to comment that I, I was a no vote last year on this only because, and I think it's an admirable project. My concern has always been um, the lack of proper school funding um, which is the only reason that I, I voted um, against it um, previously. So I just, again, it's, I think it's an admirable project, but I'm very concerned about the, um, the lack of proper school funding. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, we're ready to go ahead with the vote then. Um, Mr. Stevens, call the roll, please. Ms. Sadler? Because of my statement, I'm still a no. Thank you. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. McLennan. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We have a resolution for uh, Blaine Landing development. Uh, Ms. Watson. Blaine Landing Apartments, LLC, a Virginia limited liability company, is planning to construct a low-income housing development at 7581 Richmond Road in James City County with 19 units to be known as Blaine Landing. As part of the application to receive tax credits, Blaine Landing has proposed to accept six project-based vouchers to reduce the housing cost burden on qualified households from the Newport News Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Um, in talking with the developer and based on new information, um, the 
staff recommends due to the change in um, the original resolution that no action be taken. Can I entertain questions? How many, how many units were uh, approved in that entire development? Because I know there were there were varying different levels of, of uh, AMI, and, and but I, I thought it's it was a, a total of 119. Okay, and only 19 of them are under the vouchers. Which it would be six. Six. I'm sorry. Six. I mean, okay, but you, you said 19 units. 119 okay, units I, total. I, okay, that was my mistake. I thought you said just 19 no, no, units. No, no, no. Oh, 119 okay. units okay. and All right. six. Yeah. six. Now, now I am clear. Okay. That, I just thought, what happened to the rest of them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Much of the same material applies. Around yep. the same. All right, um, so I will go ahead and open the public hearing. And Getty? Chairman, members of the board, I'm Vernon Getty, uh, 1177 Jamestown Road, here on behalf of Blaine Landing. Also here is Mr. Tom Johnson, one of the principals of Blaine Landing. Um, there's a significant difference in this case from the one you just heard in that Blaine Landing's financing has been approved and they have their credits. Uh, a part of that, they obligated themselves to ask for approval for these project-based vouchers, and, and thus we are here tonight. But um, the project will move forward in any event. Now, in the discussions you all have had, we can shed some practical light on uh, in that Mr. Johnson's organization um, has experience with this very issue. They have a low-income housing project in Gloucester that has project-based vouchers from Hampton. And what they have found is it is not people who live and work in Hampton that apply for these. It's people who might live in Hampton now but work in Gloucester. Um, and I think the same would be true here somebody working in James City County would want to be on the list for a project-based voucher here, not somebody working in Newport News, living in western James City County. Um, the other thing they see is people who come to the project, um, like any other tenant, and if they, they will work with them and determine if it looks like they're qualified and they can refer them to Newport News and get them on the list. So here, with their six proposed vouchers out of 119 units. Um, what w our main request tonight, I mean, obviously we would like you to approve the vouchers, but we would like you to act one way or the other. Um, it's important for them to be able to go back to VHDA and say, yeah, we've fulfilled our commitment. We asked and either we have them or the county declined. So we would ask you to take action tonight if you would. That, um, any questions for Mr. Gay? We'd be glad to answer any questions. If we can add anything else to the discussion. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other? We have no speaker cards, right? No. Close the public hearing. And uh, ask the board if, there, if anybody wishes to, to uh, make a motion. Make a motion for denial. Motion for denial. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and roll it. Sir, Mr. Hipple? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. McLennan? Uh, nay. Motion carries. Okay, that concludes our public hearings, and we'll now go on to uh, the um, question of uh, board uh, uh, requests and directives. I get to go first? Sure. <laughs> um, I did want to uh, say that since the last meeting, I, I did attend the, uh, the Will Barnes picnic. Um, I, it was very well attended. I only got to spend a little bit of time there, but uh, I want to thank Peg Borman for the fine job that uh, um, the Clean County Commission does with that every year. It was a very, very uh, enjoyable uh, event. Um, on June 30th, I went with uh, uh, Chairman McGlennon up to the High Growth Coalition meeting. I'll let him discuss the details of that, but it was I found it a very, 
very interesting uh, meeting where we did discuss some affordable housing uh, aspects. So uh, really a very productive day. Um, and this past Saturday, uh, right before the bottom fell out with the rain, uh, I attended um, the Brookhaven Founders Day, uh, Brookhaven neighborhood right over behind the courthouse along old Ironbound Road. Uh, very nice little brochure that they have, and I was uh, very pleased to be invited. Um, and I will say that uh, they, uh, uh, they told us a lot about the history of that community that I had never heard, known before, and I was uh, really... Uh, very really impressed with the, the project and, and then I found out today that uh, several of our one of our staff members Teresa lives in that community as well I didn't know the idea she lived there but um, but that was uh, that was a uh, very enjoyable and I will I will give the board an update on, on a little bit on the history of that community when I get the final details because they, they had a very nice presentation there um, spent some time pardon me spent some time with uh, uh, um, chairman McGlennon on uh, July the 11th, yesterday, down at Grove Christian Outreach, uh, having a Slurpee and talking to them about uh, their, their program. Uh, and I was very impressed with the operation they were running there. Uh, um, but uh, I'll let uh, John talk a little bit more about that since it's his district. The last thing I wanted to mention was that uh, uh, yesterday I lost a very dear friend. Uh, Virginia Wortman, uh, who was a uh, Ford's Colony neighbor, personal friend, and a real uh, advocate for the community, uh, passed away uh, late yesterday afternoon from lung cancer. Uh, she was only 74, and she survived by her husband, Dr. Stan Bolding. Um, and uh, I will say that uh, Jenny had worked very hard, very diligently on the comp plan and the Citizen Participation Committee, and she was one of the driving forces behind the Workforce uh, Housing Task Force. So those were her passions, and I know she served on the... Uh, Board of Directors of the Housing Partnerships. Uh, she was a member of local NAACP, and she had a BA in economics from Duke and a long career in technology and data services with finishing with 20 years at the International Monetary Fund. Uh, we're going to miss her. We're really going to miss her, and it's a tremendous loss for the community, uh, for Fords County, for the Jamestown District, and for James City County as a whole. Um, and I ask everyone to keep family and Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, went to a couple of Fourth of July celebrations and, and seems like community is, is very engaged in Fourth of July and always loves that very much. Uh, attended HR TAC meeting and um, also met with uh, the county administrator on projects on I-64 and our support to um, move I-64 all the way through, but we're looking to, you know, there's a push and pull. Where do we start from? We're pushing to where we start in James City County and move that way. And so since everything has been going that way, we felt that James City County should be the first. We think we've got all the funding in place for it. We need a few little back funding and that sort of thing to, to finish it out, but um, very productive meeting and uh, look forward to uh, seeing that project start within the next couple of years. So, Where would it start? Jane, we're pushing for James City Yeah, County. but where? Right where it ended, right past Lightfoot. All right, and you're going to keep it on? Keep there? on. It's going all the way up 295. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it'll be Thank a nice you. extension for, Very good. for all of us. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, one of our very um, engaged community members and a constituent of the Stonehouse District, um, Mr. Jay Everson, lost his grandson last week, and who was also a James City County citizen. And um, I did attend um, a very moving service in which Jay spoke. Um, but I would like to publicly offer my deepest sympathies to Jay and his wife, Nancy, and their extended family. Um, their grandson lived with them. and obviously very close, so our thoughts and prayers go out to Jay and his family. That's all. Yes. Uh, Ms. Larson? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of things. One, um, I just want to thank staff um, for their help, especially in BDOT matters, and thank BDOT as well. We've had different issues uh, going on concerning some bike path um, debris. Um, we've been, you know, where we have the no left turn 
off of Route 5. We needed some repair done. Uh, we've had some sinkholes, um, and I, staff has been helping. I appreciate Mr. Carroll and his staff. He's underfunded, understaffed. Um, we still have some huge issues going on, especially in the Fernbrook neighborhood that I hope that VDOT will be able to address um, in some manner. Um, but I, I do want to thank our stormwater division as well. They've been out there with me on several things, and um, I'm just appreciative of everyone's efforts. I also hope soon that we'll be bringing you um, a discussion item regarding the changes that have been made on Route 5 for the Green Springs and the Centerville intersections. Um, they've now concluded their um, speed study and their accident study there. So I hope that that's something that we can talk about in the near future. Um, and then the other item, I have two more. Uh, one, we um, want to thank Station 5. We had an ambulance and a fire truck that came out for um, the Greater First Colony Fourth of July Parade. And I know that our um, first responders are asked to go out to Fourth of July parades a lot in our community. And if they're able to, they do, as long as they don't have a call. And it just, you know, people just love it. And they're so great about letting kids climb over the equipment and talk to the kids so they are not intimidated. Um, they know something about if these rescue vehicles have to come to their homes. And so I just want to say thank you. And the other item is, is that next Tuesday at one o'clock at the Embassy Suites um, over off of Bypass will be our Tourism Council meeting. Just a reminder, these are open meetings. Um, not only that, all of our meeting material is on the um, Visit Williamsburg website. Um, you can go in, see our budget, um, see where the marketing dollars are going, um, but we welcome anyone to attend the meeting. We have public comment, um, so just want to remind everybody that that meeting is um, next Tuesday. And I just want to thank my colleagues for allowing me to come in um, remotely this evening. I uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Larson, and we're glad you were able to uh, join us uh, electronically tonight. Um, I have a couple of items, that, are, some of which will uh, just uh, amplify on some points others have made. Uh, first of all, though, I w did want to mention that uh, we, had, we got some uh, very um, uh, good uh, coverage uh, on CBS News last week uh, of the uh, dire situation facing Jamestown Island. Uh, and uh, while you never like to, to feel your community is uh, providing bad news, um, it's very important for the uh, nation at large to understand the, uh, the circumstances confronting Jamestown Island as they embark on a $30 million fundraising campaign to, uh, to save the island. So um, hopefully that uh, coverage will be helpful in that regard. Um, as Mr. Eisenhower indicated, uh, we were both uh, at uh, uh, Grove Christian Outreach Center yesterday for their Slurpees with a Senator event. Uh, I thought it could have been Slurpees with supervisors, um, <laughs> since we outnumbered the Senators uh, <laughs> two to one. Uh, but uh, it was a great event, uh, and I had a terrific opportunity to, to uh, have a conversation with several uh, constituents about uh, issues that they are uh, interested in. Uh, and uh, to hear a little bit about the excitement that's building in the community toward uh, the construction of a new uh, uh, park uh, in, in uh, Grove. Uh, I'd also like to mention the fact that next Wednesday uh, they will be partnering with uh, Habitat for Humanity and Restore uh, um, in an event that they're calling uh, um, Slay Hunger uh, uh, Christmas in July, uh, where people can make donations uh, to uh, the Grove Christian Outreach Center and Habitat uh, of food supplies uh, on Wednesday uh, of next week, um, and uh, they would very much appreciate uh, support for that worthy cause. I uh, wanted to mention, as, as Mr. Eisenhower suggested, that we did have an, an event uh, on June 30th of the Coalition of High Growth Communities, of which we are, we are a founding member uh, and uh, um, have played some kind of role in its uh, existence over the years. And uh, 
Uh, we had a great attendance of, uh, in, in excess of 60 uh, people representing more than a dozen jurisdictions present. Uh, uh, we got to hear from Zach Mannheimer, uh, who was uh, the um, architect of our uh, 3D printed house uh, in Forest Heights. Uh, we got to hear um, from uh, the Joint Legislative Audit and Review Commission on their study of affordable housing in Virginia. The whole conference was organized around the concept of affordable housing uh, for high growth communities. And uh, we got, uh, a, a, we had a wonderful panel discussion that included our own Vaughn Poehler uh, uh, doing a, he, uh, a presentation uh, on local government's uh, challenges in addressing affordable housing, something we've been talking about this evening. Uh, and I uh, will be circulating to other members of the board and to other localities uh, the materials from that meeting so you'll have a chance to see what we talked about uh, and how uh, um, uh, that organization is, is uh, prospering at the moment. Um, uh, add to the fact that, uh, um, as, as uh, Jim Eisenhower indicated, uh, uh, we really lost a great person in, in Virginia Worth Wortman. Uh, who passed away this earlier this week. Um, uh, I was fortunate to be able to, de to deliver to her on uh, June 29th uh, procl uh, proclamation, uh, citing her for her um, excellent service to the county uh, on the uh, citizens participation team of our, our last comprehensive plan and on the affordable housing task force uh, committee. Uh, Ginny's uh, passing is a great loss to the community and uh, uh, I was, uh, pleased that I was able to have a, a conversation with her. her. Her mind was as sharp as ever. Her, her body obviously had undergone uh, tremendous weakening, and uh, uh, I just wish uh, Stan and her family uh, well. Uh, and finally, uh, it was a great honor for me to be able to attend on the Saturday of Juneteenth weekend uh, an event sponsored by the Williamsburg Men's Club, an organization of African-American leaders in the community, uh, where they really did something extraordinary. They, they um, had histories uh, written up by members of the community and the, and the Williamsburg Men's Club, uh, recognizing the leadership of previous uh, important people in the community. And uh, I was very honored to be asked to accept uh, this uh, particular uh, um, proclamation uh, and uh, uh, materials uh, from them, uh, recognizing the significance of John Tack Roberts. Uh, John Tack Roberts is the uh, namesake for the Roberts District. Uh, he um, was born a slave, uh, yet rose to be a magistrate uh, in Virginia which, uh, at a time when magistrates actually heard cases and so he could be seen as the first uh, African-American judge in Hampton Roads. Uh, he uh, was a, a great leader in the community. And uh, more. And so they tasked me with finding the appropriate location in the county to display this, uh, which I uh, will certainly uh, work to do. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, uh, they also really took the uh, effort to recognize the important role played by uh, um, African-American men in uh, James City County over the years to heart. And uh, I think it was quite important for this generation to be recognizing previous ge uh, generations of leaders uh, and to recognize that there are very big shoes to fill, but they can fill them. And uh, that, I think, uh, was, was an extraordinary event. And I appreciate very much the chance to be there for it. With that, I'll turn it over to the county administrator for his report. Nothing to share this evening. Nothing at all. Nothing this evening. We Summertime. Have so much. And, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Uh, then uh, I would uh, um, bring us into recess, I guess, uh, uh, for uh, the purpose of calling together the service authority. Call this meeting, James City County Service Authority Board of Directors, regular meeting. Call to order. Mr. Powell, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Eisenhower. Here. Ms. Adler. Here. Mr. McGlennon. Here. Mr. Hipple. Here. Mr. Chairman, right. I'd move that uh, Ms. Larson be allowed to participate electronically. Thank you. All right. Roll call, please, sir. Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Adler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye.
Thank you very much. And I would ask that Ms. that Mr. Hipple is the vice chair of JCSA. Uh, please run the meeting for this evening. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. No, I see no presentations. Do we have any public comments? No, sir. All right. We'll move on to the consent calendar. Motion to adopt. Motion for approval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. aye. Ayes carried. Public hearing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Want a general manager's mm -hmm. authorization to convey James City County Service Authority easements, investments, and property equal or less than one half of an acre. Mr. Powell. Uh, the James City Service Authority routine, routinely accepts uh, easements uh, from other parties uh, to facilitate the installation of uh, utilities. Uh, occasionally, uh, development plans change, and the easements that we've granted uh, are, no longer, are, are no longer necessary. In those instances, it's in the Service Authority's best interest to abandon those easements back to the uh, original owner. The current policy is for um, the board to uh, consider those easement abandonments after a public hearing. Uh, this resolution would give the general manager the authority to approve any easement abandonment up to half an acre, uh, just in order to make the uh, process more expeditious. Uh, these easements rarely have any uh, significant value, uh, and uh, this is just, a, um, uh, as I said, a, a, an initiative to try to expedite that process. So staff recommends approval. Any questions, Mr. Powell? About how many cases would you say that, that we deal with? Um... It, it's, a, I would say, a, a two or three a year is probably what we average. And the vast majority of them are under half an acre. All right, well, I'll go ahead and open the uh, public hearing and how many speaker cards? Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and look for the board direction or motion. Move approval. Move approval. Mr. Powell, would you call roll, please? Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Adler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Ms. Larson. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye. All right, board considerations. Formal acceptance of the water and sewer system fiscal year 2022. Mr. Powell. This is simply the annual resolution where the board formally accepts all the um, all the utilities that have been dedicated to us for the past year. So staff recommends approval. Any questions for staff? All right, look for a motion. Motion. I'll move the motion. Thank you. Mr. Powell, roll. Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Adler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Ms. Larson. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye. All right, next is a closed session. Do we want to go into closed session and and John, do you want to follow us and yep. we'll joint that together? Okay, looking for consideration of personal matter and performance evaluation of general manager pursuant to section 2.2-311A1 of the Code of Virginia. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. All right, Ms. Power, would you call roll? Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Adler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Ms. Larson. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye. All right, we're in closed session. I'll call us back into session for the Board of Supervisors and ask for a motion to go into closed session uh, under uh, cons for consideration of personnel matter, the performance evaluation of the, uh, uh, of, uh, excuse me, <laughs> performance evaluation of the county administrator and the county attorney pursuant to section 2.23711A1 of the Code of Virginia and consideration of a personnel matter, the appointment of individuals to county boards and commissions pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia, specifically appointment to the Economic mm -hmm. Development Authority. Motion. So moved. Mr. Stevens, you call the roll, please. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. McGlynn? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we are in closed session.
Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Sadler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Ms. Larson. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye. All right. Board requests and directives. Any? All right. We'll move on. General manager's update. Uh, I did want to just uh, speak for a minute about the um, the dashboard uh, that you received this morning, since that is the um, represents the end of June, um, the end of the, and the end of the fiscal year. I did want to just note that uh, we do have an accrual period uh, for the service authority because of the way we, we bill, you know, right. we haven't necessarily received uh, funds for the service we provided or the water that we we sold in in, in June. Uh, but if you look at the numbers based on the historical trends of the accrual period, we should be meeting our, our revenue projections on the water fund. Uh, we may be slightly below, but if we are below on our water revenues, it will be more than offset by how much we will exceed on the sewer revenues. So operating revenues in the big picture are good, and the tap fees are the same way. Uh, we are just a few dollars short uh, of what we projected on water tap fees, but we are over on the sewer tap fees. So uh, I just wanted to note that at the bottom line. Uh, obviously, these are unaudited figures, but you know, based, uh, based on the... Um, on the reports, the projections, financial projections for the year end look like they're solid. All right, and that's all you. I've got. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking for an adjournment to, to July 26th. To 1 p.m. on July 26th, uh, 2022. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Ms. Sadler. Aye. Mr. McGlennon. Aye. Ms. Larson. Aye. Mr. Hipple. Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Call the uh, James City County Board of Supervisors back into order. Uh, and uh, can I have a motion to certify the closed meeting? I oh, certified okay. the book about those matters that we said we would. Thank you, Ms. Larson. Uh, would you please call the roll, Mr. Stevens. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. Apple? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. McGinnon? Aye. We have one appointment uh, to make this evening. Uh, I'll go ahead and make it if you want. That's fine. Okay. Uh, the appointment would be to appoint Re Rebecca Mulvane to the Economic uh, Development Authority, uh, um, effective uh, July, f I guess today, July 1st, 2022, expire June 30th, 2026. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Motion carries. And we need a motion to adjourn. Most for adjournment until 1 p.m. on July 22nd or July 26th, 2022. Roll call, please. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned.